Welcome back, everybody, to the inaugural. We're here with our third play-in match for the main event. We have got ourselves some Australian vs. Pinoy Dota. It's time for Execration up against Immunity, the newly sponsored team from Australia. Execration clawing their way through the Southeast Asian qualifiers. They've had a slightly tougher road to get here, but they have not really been, I guess, even pushed to the limit in any of their series, winning all of their games in the qualifiers with relative ease. But I'm not alone for these matches. I'm going to actually be joined by my fellow Australian. Very suitable, considering we're casting some Australian Dota. It's Base Skip. How are you doing, Base Skip? Excited for some Aussie Dota? I am damn excited. I feel like I'm going to be a little bit biased this game, I... but I don't know. I think I can get away. Can I get away with it at least once? Like, in general, I'm pretty objective, but I really just want to cheer for Team Immunity here, so... I don't know, maybe we'll have to like keep one another in check as far as <laughs> no. that's concerned. When I, when I asked you to co cast, I was like, is this the best idea? Two Australians casting the Australian team. We're Australia. already like, <laughs> we're already very pro Australia with the music, so. <laughs> yeah. It's going to quickly go downhill. I mean, we're, we're friends with all these guys as well, right? So not only, yeah. not, not only am I a, a huge N9 fanboy, like from back in the day, uh, I also, you know, think all of these guys are fantastic players and. You know, I'm their friend as well. Well, I'd like to consider myself my, uh, yeah. but they're my friends. So, yeah, I hope I hope they do well. Uh, Ping has proven to be a little bit of a problem for them in the past, and you know, for speaking frankly, they did lose that that best of three uh, on the SCA server against RRQ, I think it was. So for JDL, which was yes. not their best performance. So we'll see. The, back on back on N9, they used to pull off. Massive plays and big upsets and all kinds of things on absolutely absurd ping. Yeah. Um, and looks like they've gotten a little bit complacent dominating the Oz server for so long, but it's nice to see them challenged a little bit over in SCA. Yeah, and, and no, they're not going around complaining about the pings or anything. Like They, they know no. what they signed up for, and anyone if they even start complaining, you'll hear all the Aussie community just telling them to toughen up, I'm sure. So <laughs> there's yeah, not going to be exactly. any forgiveness there. <laughs> but uh, like you say, good friends with these teams, and we'll get ourselves into the draft. Immunity... And playing on the Radiant side is a best of three, so we'll see how they fare in the uh, basically against the Southeast Asian teams. This is really the first true test for this team in the uh, Southeast Asian team. You mentioned the best of three against RRQ, but if they win this, they get into uh, the group stage with some of the best teams in Southeast Asia. Yeah, and I believe they've been scrimming a little bit in SCA. I know that it's actually yeah. a bit difficult for them to find scrims in Oz, in all honesty. Like, the level of teams over here is just they are head and shoulders kind of above everybody else yeah. so finding a team that really challenges them on the local server can be a little bit difficult and that's that's a really big problem for them in all honesty so we'll see what kind of form they're in i think i have seen a couple of lobbies with them popping up here and there playing against some of the better c teams so well, Apparently they've been they're doing really well. Practice. Like I've I've heard okay. just from talking with David Risk and like even yep. talking to Winter the from RNG Sports. Like Winter's like yeah, those guys are like beating us most of the time. So okay, <laughs> it sounds like they're actually doing well against the Southeast Asian teams. But this is official matches, so it's quite different to scrims for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, they've got a pretty I would say comfortable draft as far as they're concerned so far. Yeah. They've got Slicks probably on his signature Invoker. Uh, we've got the Marana as well. That's probably going to be Godot's hero, I would think. Uh, they typically run it, they do run it sometimes mid for Slicks or as a support for Godot. I don't know if Balls really runs it as a carry a whole lot. And the thing is, even when they run it as the Godot sort of four position Marana, Risk just becomes the hard support in every sense of the word or every sense <laughs> of the phrase. And then Godot just gets the space to sometimes pick up a Midas straight after Arcane Boots. And he ends up sometimes becoming the most farmed hero on his team. So what Immunity really like to do is transition that support Mrana into you know, a semi-carry or a full carry. Play that like uh, AUI like, 2000 style support. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, Execration, they get Ember Spirit once again. We saw this in, uh, well, both the two games they played against um, Everlast. And it probably Ninja Boogie played at mid. Normally Ninja Boogie the carry play for this team, but when they had the Ember Spirit, he was actually playing in the mid lane. So it seems that he may be the Ember Spirit play for this team. They get Nyx and Dazzle as well. Uh, Dazzle pretty much hands down going to be a support here, but Nyx is a bit fl more flexible. Could go into the off lane, but can also be played as a support. Yeah, they definitely have a couple of options as far as lanes are concerned here. And I wonder if execration of it, it kind of looks like they've done their homework a little bit because immunity have been really heavily picking bat uh, whenever it's available for Shatan. Yeah. so 
I don't know if they've been if if they've scrimmed against them, if they've just been asking around and seeing what they've been uh, what they've been up to. But I it, it was getting looks banned like out. They know like what you're doing. The, the entire best of three against Everlast, the, the hero was also banned out, mostly okay. by execration. So it seems so like, maybe it's just execration's preference yeah. to not deal with the bat. Um, I think the Doom ban is definitely a res somewhat of a respect ban because Execration ran Doom in both their two games in their the earlier best of three today when they qualified in. So, I mean, you just are saying they don't want to have to deal with the the Doom bringer. Yeah, and I think you can be pretty sure that so I was watching that best of three, and I I bet Immunity probably were uh, sitting there as well just to get the, the the final couple of notes scribbled down about Execration style, what they like to draft, and uh, especially on the current version, you need to be very well prepared. If if one captain is that little bit stronger than the other, if you don't see that last pick OD or something like that coming, then that can just that can be game over right there in a lot of situations, especially when the teams are evenly matched as far as player skill is yeah. concerned. And that's why coming into this match, Immunity have an advantage because they've have all these execration recent vods to watch. Whereas execration, maybe they can ask teams like, "What do Immunity do?" But there haven't been any actual matches apart from the best of three against RRQ. So maybe they yeah. had time to check it out, but. They didn't even know if they were going to get to this match. Like, they had to beat Everlast to get here first. So their main priority was, let's beat Everlast for immunity. They had this information advantage over their opponents coming in. So that can always help them out, just being a lesser-known team. And that's what, often what you see. Like, a team, they play too many matches, and after a while, teams figure them out. It happened to Alliance back, like, after TI3. It's happened to Empire recently, I feel, as well, where teams sort of understand better what they're doing. So you get too much information about a team, and beating them becomes a whole lot easier. Yeah, and immunity here go for the faceless void. So, I guess they're feeling reasonably confident that execration either aren't going to go aggressive or they can deal with the aggro lane if it does end up happening. And faceless void, it's always nice to have more lockdown for the Ember Spirit. And Chronosphere is locked down in Spades, so uh, definitely nice to have. The other thing is as well, if you see him in the middle of a fairly long slide of fist, you can just jump to where he's going to end the slide of fist. And then Chrono there and kind of wait for him. So uh, that can always be nice to do. And the other thing is, well, when you're inside a fist, if you throw a remnant and try and jump to it during the side of fist, you'll always come back to where you started the side of fist. So you, there's no way to escape. They will. They do know exactly where you're okay. where you're coming back to. The faceless void potentially like a counter towards the Ember Spirit. But... Yeah, kind of. As much as like perma stunning and then beating a hero to death is a counter to any hero, right? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. you <laughs> yeah. could argue Chronos is a counter to any hero because it locks him down in place, so. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice little hero here, and I feel like it's going to be tough for Execration to go for that offensive tri lane because it'll be, like, a, what, a Dazzle, Nyx plus one. Nyx is not the best offensive tri lane hero, and you're going offensive tri lane against Rubik Murana. Sure, Faceless Void doesn't offer a whole lot to that tri lane, but if you hit a Telekinesis into an arrow, Faceless Void can just time walk in, get some extra slow, and he's got high base armor, he's relatively tanky, and maybe get a kill. So I think just because it's a faceless void, it, it's not necessarily a no-brainer that you want to go for that offensive trial. And the other factor is it gives you 1v1 matchups, and Invoker, he can win his 1v1 matchup, and Immunity can last pick something for Shatan that also wins a 1v1 matchup. So that's where it may be quite risky going for that offensive trial. Yeah, and are we just going to see a Darkseer here to round things out for Immunity? Back everybody into a huge Chronosphere? I, I don't see why not, actually. Well, hmm. It's what, Darkseer left in the pool, then you've got your Clockwork... There's no other real big offlaners unless they go like back for your old school bounty hunter. I don't think bounty hunter is the way you want to play this. Although you can always chase around the Chen, steal his experience, just be a general nuisance. And Dazzle Chen can't really kill a bounty hunter too easily. Yeah, but I, I think most likely it's what it's as you said. Just uh, get the the Darkseer here. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of counter push. Gives you a really nice. Well, gives you a really nice mech carrier. Uh, which they do lack a little bit. I mean, some teams run the mech on the Invoker, but I don't know if that's necessarily immunity style, especially with this this Faceless Void pickup. I think they're looking more towards aiming for their timing to be mid to late as opposed to uh, to early to yeah. mid. But we'll, oh. we'll have to see. The Chen pickup makes Execration's actual lanes quite weak. They have a lot of roaming potential with the Chen here, but it's going to be like a Dazzle Ember Spirit safe lane. Puck in the mid, Nyx in the off lane most likely. So. Yeah. Nyx is going to struggle. Like You could even leave Void almost like 1v1 there if you really want to. Rubik Morana offer a lot of ganking potential, and they're going to go last pick Enigma for the offlane. This is a, a cool little niche pick here, I feel, coming out from Immunity. 
Yeah, and especially you mentioned that the Nyx Assassin, I mean, you could leave the Faceless Void or just one support down there to kind of deal with him. He's not that strong as an offlane. Like, the yeah. way that he pays off is roaming and ganking and uh, doing things during the mid-game just with levels. But even if things end up... Okay, wow. No, so Shatan's on the Void. Balls is, this is on Jungle the Enigma, then? With offlane Mirana? I guess so. Okay, I, I was going to say, like, oh, the other option is to, like, offlane the Mirana or start the Enigma off in the offlane, just deny a couple of waves, be annoying, and then you can swap one of the supports up to the offlane uh, and rotate the Enigma into yeah. the jungle. But it looks like they're just going to be a little bit greedy right from the word go. But this is a really nice way to respond to the Chen. Execration, they're like, look, we have a greedy jungle, we think we can get away with it, and immunity just go for the one-up. Uh, and Enigma jungle is pretty much the fastest of any hero in the game, so... He's gone for eight tangos, so he immediately pulls mm. a couple to Shatan, so we'll have to see if he's actually... Yeah, he's pulling all these to teammates, so let's say eight tangos is more like, oh, he's going to go laning, but um, he keeps five for himself. This The fact he's actually got tangos, I think we may not necessarily see Enigma in the jungle, because you don't need these tangos for the jungle. Do you yeah, think he's definitely not. Do you think he's going to go laning here, or...? Uh, I wonder. It could be just fairly gank-heavy. This is a really interesting... Level one Both from... teams doing weird things. Immunity spot them. It's day vision here. They see exactly what's going on. Shatan reveals himself. The arrow going to go flying. It's not going to hit anyone. I... What is going on here? They swapped Have they just, sides. They've swapped sides. That's... It's like, oh, guys, we're, we're on the wrong side this time. Dash swap like... team. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> it's a beautiful little dance right now. Goat's going to scout them out from the high ground. I don't know if this is going to work in his favor. Uwe hasn't actually skilled anything yet. Can still go for a Karapas. He gets lift up. He actually levels up the Impale. He misses it completely. Five heroes, and he cannot hit a single one. He's going to be your first blood. Uwe goes down. BG's now in trouble. He's walked into this one. He pops a Gravy to start things off, but he's still going to die regardless. And immediately have taken absolutely zero damage from this. They get themselves one kill. They still want to chase for more, but without much lockdown, they, they won that engagement with an Invoker who has no spells. A Faceless Void who leveled up Time Lock level one, and they just 5v5. The Enigma also, conversion. They had three heroes who have absolutely nothing for a level one fight. All they had was Telekinesis and Arrow. And the Arrow missed. Actually, he had a well, second I mean, Arrow, so... I mean, you... You pointed it out, though. The Dire team, they didn't... Immunity saw the Dire, but the Dire, I don't think they actually spotted Immunity all... None, none of no. the smokes got revealed, so... They just waited for them up on the high ground. And they were already like, oh, okay, guys, we got the word down. We didn't find anybody... Like, level one, not successful. Let's just go back to our lanes. We'll start chatting about what we're going to do. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, immunity are all waiting for you on what you think is your own side of the map. So, yeah. nice little start for them, especially the first blood uh, on the invoker. Already some boots coming out for slicks yeah. right now. They would have seen the arrow go flying in, but I guess the big thing is they didn't see five heroes. Mm. They saw, they know the Mirana's there. They maybe saw the Faceless Void, I think. But apart from that, there was they didn't see the other three who were still smoked up. So, Well, yeah. Boots already for Invoker, and this is a great start for the uh, the Australian boys. As it uh, looks like we will be seeing Shatan actually head to the. Is this an offlane faceless void? I mean, he has an escape. Yeah. Technically, we get an offlane void. This is. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an offlane solo faceless void. It's going to be kind of a dual lane by the looks of things, like an Enigma void. Dual lane. I feel like Lich would have been like a more logical choice, but I guess they really want the team fight presence of the Enigma. Not to mention Enigma can then can fall back to the jungle and really power farm, whereas a Lich doesn't really do much with any farms. Yeah, and still get the denies, still secure the levels for the the faceless void. So I don't know. This is this is interesting, but I think it it could definitely work. And the void doesn't even necessarily need like if we we talked about his role in this game as just being. You know, good lockdown for the Ember, you know, reasonably good initiation. And he doesn't really need right-click items to do any of that. All he needs is his levels, and that should hopefully be it. Well, that should hopefully be what he finds in this offlane. So it's, it's unorthodox, but uh, I think it's going to work. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Probably just deny right off from the get-go. Has only two clarities here, so it won't be the... He won't have that much mana to sustain himself, but... Yeah, there we go. Denies. Actually going to... Okay, he's not pushing forward just yet, but this wave already pulled very far back, so... They know that Chen can't do anything, because Chen's no. had his camps mostly blocked. He tries to deward this, but he's going to miss the first sentry. And he's just going to go searching around for this. He uses a Tango as well. He's not scouting anything. That Tango actually kind of misused. As, uh, well, that big clamp permanently blocked. 
least for now, yeah. <laughs> Permanent leave for four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he's not getting dewatered, but he's going to look to stack. The no, he's not even going to stack, so... The big camp over here on the far left is probably what he wants to go for. There is a dark troll waiting for him, but... Beyond that, this Chen cannot get anything out of the jungle. And those mud golems are so sad as well. There's actually nothing for him to convert on this side of the jungle, so... Yeah. A little bit of a trek for Fro oh, for Fox to start things off. I think Godot realizes he wants to come get this dark troll, and... Well, Fox will get this, I believe. Actually, Godot's going to maybe go for a bit of a pull here, so Chen... He's going to have to compete for this one, but he desperately needs this Dark Troll. He's going to convert it directly in front of their own eyes. Jatana's leveled up Time Walk now, so... He's got the Escape Spell available, and... They've got such bad... They maybe... Okay, they've got one point in the Searing Chain, so they can actually get some decent lockdown here. But this Tri-Lane, I just feel, doesn't... Lacks killing power to really do much against the Void Enigma. Yeah, the... Charlene is honestly yeah, is a little bit attack. underwhelming. They know that there's a smoke over on the Chen, so they might have to be a little bit cautious about that, but yeah. Ganking, and it's hard to gank, like, just Puck that. plus Chen. I don't know how easily they can kill the Invoker mid. Yeah, that is that is. They can't gank Shatan because he's got Time Walk plus Boots. Maybe Godot at the top lane can be backstab, but options are limited, I feel. Yeah, worth mentioning... Uh, worth mentioning that this Radiant Ward should probably be a little bit further around the corner, so it actually has a yeah. bit of intel over where the Chen is jungle. He's gonna smoke what? right underneath it anyway, so... What's he thinking? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is here. Execration. They, I, these guys must be just going on tilt or something almost. There is an Invis rune on the Nyx, so maybe Invoker's thinking like, look, sure this Chen smoked up to come maybe gank me or gank top, but he can't actually kill me without the Nyx or someone. But the Nyx is here invis, and that's something which immunity do not know. They did not see the invis ring getting picked up. So this game could theoretically work just because of the Nyx assassin. Impaled to start things off here. They got an instant of follow. Slick's taking a lot of damage. There's your orb. Gets a forward spirit up, and this will be a kill. So he saw the Chen smoke, but what he did not know was that the Nyx was there. Chen actually gets really low to the tower. ADHP will be enough to keep him alive, though. Thank God. Yeah, a little bit surprised. I don't think it would have changed things, but a little bit surprised to see Risk not carrying a TP scroll uh, just yet on his Rubik. Normally, he's really diligent in terms of yeah. being ready to counter gank uh, on his supports. But maybe he gets a like a counter kill on the on the uh, the Chen who got really low. But we'll see Nyx come in and look to contest his pull from Risk as uh, just get whatever experience he can. Nyx has actually hit level four, so. Uh, this offlane, as far as uh, Execration is concerned, is a big, big victory for them. Sure, Marana getting mostly free farm, but Nyx having all this experience is definitely a big boost to him. Shatan's gone Tranquil Boots! Offlane Void with Tranquil Boots! This is some... <laughs> the Aussies coming up with something new and unique, at least. Well, this is... I mean, this is what they were known for back in the N9 days, right? Like, doing things that other teams weren't really, and making it work. I think you know, some, some people credit like Darkseer entering the pro scene a little bit to these guys, or before he was yeah. always picked, always banned. You know, we've seen Darkseer forever. These guys in Team Fire who were playing Darkseer all the time. Like back when it was yeah. like Fire and N9 were like the two big teams in the Western scene, and they were playing Darkseer. Um, yeah, they ran all kinds good. of cool stuff like Carry Silencer, um, Farming Leshrac they used to do a lot of too. Like they were one of the few teams doing the Farming Leshrac in the early days, and well, we're seeing some innovation once again. Oh, we'll see if it, we'll see if it works, right? Like his, the, the history books will tell whether or not this <laughs> is a, a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's as good as that. Too, like it looked like they're off to a good start, but realistically, that could have been any five heroes. They just had the high ground advantage there, and Nyx walked into him to get those first two kills. So, I think it's too soon to say really how well this draft and strategy of theirs is working out. Yeah, but two moderately successful dual lanes is is not a bad situation to be in at all. They're just kind of leaving the Marana to bully the Nyx Assassin now that phase boots have been picked up and Risk is securing his levels, the offlane is doing quite well. Uh, nobody's really getting free farm on the map at all, which is also worth um, mentioning. Yeah. It's, it still looks like, well, most of the, actually, the you've got to support Rubik getting nice jungle pulls. There is a Chen in the jungle, so I guess that makes some, th some things a bit more even. And looking at the gold graph, pretty much nothing separating the two teams. Just the slight experience lead. As uh, there is a dream call dropped in mid lane. Slick's getting initiated on, but AA cannot get this kill on his own. And Slick just says, I'll just stand and fight you. That's a, a wasted dream coil coming out from the execration solo mid park. Yeah, and unless you get that kill, you're not even trading regen. Like, Slick still has a salve and two tangos, and the puck has 
nothing left empty bottle for him i'm so. surprised like maybe that, was, that was interesting you should look to time that with like a chen gank with smoke or something which fox could have brought out another smoke for himself but i think aa just getting a little bit feeling a bit rushed in this mid lane like he has to make something happen for his team yeah. Fortunately, this is going to end up coming down, finds a double damage. This is going to be spotted by the Radiant Ward, so... Okay. Yeah. Should be aware, should be okay to deal with it. Godot's headed his way over into the jungle now, so they've kind of left Shatan to his own devices. But again, big goal for him on this offlane is not to really build up any carry items. I think he's just looking for the levels. Well, he's, so. he's going max time lock here. This is a interesting build from the Faceless Void. Normally you think offlane, it's all about surviving, but he's like, I want the killing power of time lock. What's so. the point of surviving longer if you're just an initiating void, right? Like yep. you jump in, you chrono, maybe you get a couple of nice Radiant bashes in the chrono for extra damage. And I'm that's really... kind of his role, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I'm curious to see what he goes for. I feel like the typ more, most typical kind of build from voids attack. these days is like Mask of Madness Maelstrom type build, which could be what he goes for. Has picked up an Orb of Venom, which is a attack modifier. I don't, Orb of Venom doesn't work with lifesteal? Or... Uh, mm. I feel like it doesn't, Cause, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I feel like it won't either, but I'm not 100% sure on that. He's got backup at the top lane, Shatan, and this Centaur is just going to feed. Enigma gets the last hit on it, and they're going to get some conversions here to get the aggro off the tower, so... No tower for you. The other great synergy here is Shatan hits level 6. He just uses Chrono in this lane because there's an Invoker with level 4 Exort Sunstrike. So that's a pretty much an easy kill on any of these, on the Dazzle especially, because you need Careful to catch the Dazzle to, to make sure there's no break. But once you turn six, I think we'll see a kill up top. Uh, jump in mid, they've got the Dream Curl, they've got the double damage, there is going to be a Moonlight Shadow. Oh, it gets the counter kill, but still probably down. Moonlight Shadow maybe needs to come a bit early. Nice arrow dodge from AA as uh, Mirana TP's in uh, towards the mid lane. Radiance but middle tower is under attack. The Moonlight Shadow may be a bit slow. Was it Chronosphere going to come top lane? Catches out two here, BG going to be the first target. No Shallow Grave for the time being, he gets lifted to prevent the Grave, and Ninja Boogie, he's not level 6 yet! He's in all sorts of trouble, throws out a slide of fist here, Shatan taking a bit of damage, does not want to time walk after. He's gonna have to back off, so the Kronos here just getting a Dazzle kill. But, yeah, it's still worth it, you're an offlane hero, you get a kill for yourself, and... Shatan now, 1-0 and 2 early on. Radiance bottom tower. Yeah, I think this game attack. he goes probably some combination of, like, Ags and BKB. Would be, okay. I guess, like... He probably, or maybe he can go Mantha style instead, but he does need to be able to get out of the silence from the yeah. Puck, just so the Puck's initiation doesn't completely shut him down. And then I think if your goal is not to be, you know, oh, he not comes to be puck a under the cow. They see the Puck though, but he's going to all but and goes in with the silence as well. Risk now in trouble. Silence up, can turn and lift up the Puck, but he throws a Fade Bolt out instead. They get the kill on AA. He's not having a good, good, good game. Time walk after Ninja Boogie now. Drops a Searing Chains on Shatan with the Flame Guard. Here he gets back, though. <laughs> that level 3 time lock. The Iron Jesus, that is Shatan. Working in his favor. And meanwhile, behind. Looks like Nyx Assassin looking for that pick off. The Rubik's already back to Fountain, though. And this Nyx, vendetted up. He's going to run under the tower. He actually reveals himself. Same thing the Puck did. I'm Execration are just, like, over-committing for kills here, it feels like. Yeah, and didn't even get the Rubik at the end of the day. So Puck just completely gives his life away. Uh, really, and Team Immunity, it's like, it's a pretty clowny game so far, but they're making it work, and Slicks is relatively uninterrupted. He does have those two deaths, but he's still got his Midas up at a pretty reasonable time, and he's always ready for the Sunstrike support as well, so he's just going to be quite content to AFK farm. This lineup this is just all about the, the team fight, and as far as, and having the range series with Chronosphere, like this, like you say, Void going for an Ag this game could really work out well, because you've got, it sets up Mirana arrows, You've got the DPS of an Invoker as well as Mirana, as well as the Enigma. You can set up even Black Holes in some ways with a Chronosphere, so... Immunity are going to be the kings of teamfights here, and that's something which Execration have to really worry about. Yeah, well, Execration, three-man smoke, making their way up towards top. Can they get Chitani? Doesn't have a TP Dyer's scroll at the moment. It's going to get jumped, silenced up. Even like Shadow's going to pop. They use the Dream Coil even for that one as well. They use absolutely everything. Dream Coil, Vendetta... Multiple Centaur stuns were needed as well, but hey, it's a kill nonetheless, so they may, it looks like they may fold this up with the myself. tier 1 tower. Void down the sidelines for 15 seconds. Yeah, no movement whatsoever from immunity to try and deal with this. The Glyph is on cooldown as well, so even if they started TPing now, I don't think they're going to be able to hold it. Oh, actually, one TP from Risk. That, no, th yeah. yeah, okay, there that we go. That was brave. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like someone, well, I don't even know who can TP safely. Like, anyone just gets insta stunned and burst down, fallen. so. 
I think Risk just not not quite on the same page as the rest of his team, but they'll look for a counter push on bottom lane. See if Execration get into position to defend. The tower at bottom still full HP. No pressure's been put on just yet. Actually, both mid and bot pretty Dragon healthy, so it goes to show that Immunity have been spending a lot of time on the top side of the map, and this is a little bit slow as far as making their way down here for this trade. It's not even really a trade. The tier 1's already dead top, and Execration have, have had time uh, to move back down to bottom lane, yeah. so they get caught a little bit flat-footed there. Yeah, they took it themselves a small lead, especially in the experience and level department after a few good fights, but yeah, that was... Not quite the trade they were after, giving up the... I mean, I, don't, I feel like that top tier one was doomed to fall anyways, but they didn't make a full commit on that bottom lane. Uh, they're just a bit too slow to move on out, but... They'll swing back mid, and like you say, Slicks has been completely left untouched, and... This is, I think, the probably the most fun here in the game. Yeah, Invoker topping the net worth chart, net worth chart right now. Picks up a Staff of Wizardry, so... Either see the Yule Scepter or even a Four Staff, probably the more common Invoker item these days, but Yule's Exhort Invoker, Dyer's the old Scandal build, definitely very attack. powerful as well. Does he need the setup? Like, if hey, if Arrow, Black Ball, Chronosphere are not enough for you to land your spells, then... Yeah. Uh, I, I think he needs the survivability and the mo fallen. and just the general useful utility of a full stop more than yeah. the yours. Yeah, he could go Necro Book as well. Maybe? Oh yeah, that's actually your more standard Invoker build. Yeah. At least the, as far as Radiance what we've seen bottom lately. Tower is under attack. And Execration, make a move for this tier 1 bot, but... Well, immunity not going to defend this one either, so... So that one's just going to go down for free. Their lineup in the mid game definitely gets much stronger. Radiant's we do see Void building towards that Axe Scepter. They're going to pop a Moonlight Shadow here. Fox in the mid lane, possibly in trouble. There's an Enigma as well as a Rubik looking for him. Oh, there we go. Sorry, Lift's going to come in now as uh going to see a bit of first damage here with the Sunstrike. Not going to be on the point here. Triple TP is coming in from Execration. Gonna be looking for risk here on the Rubik, and if this slide of fist lands, it will be a kill. Not gonna get the searing chains as Enigma uh, does TP on out, so. Bit of an unusual kill attempt. Only the two supports teaming up for that one, and they did not have the damage output they needed to get the kill. It would have been a kill had the Sunstrike landed. Chen on 300 or so, I think, yeah. and Invoker with a 350. Chen, well, at the same time, Chen didn't pop the hand of God. Like, if he really wanted to stay alive, he could have used that, but. True. <laughs> Sunstrike mid. Fox tanks most of that damage in. Make him, bit, make him think twice about going for this push. Chen getting very close to a mech. 100 away from a mech, and that's where I feel immunity. Sure, their mid game team fight's strong and scary, but Hand of God plus mech will negate a lot of that damage. Meanwhile, Chronosphere has been used on Yue. He's going to go down. That's a Nyx Assassin kill. And Mispirit got caught in the Chronosphere. There's a Bash to start things off as well. Telekinesis soul as well as a Star Soul. Hand of God coming in. Black Hole being used on two. Pug's already gone down. The Grave is there on Ninja Boogie. Keep him alive just that little bit longer. He needs to try Fire Emblem out of there. We'll just manage to escape. Shatan getting stunned up once, twice by the Centaurs. The second stun actually not used, so... Not the best chain side. And Godot now looking to chase. He's got a Malefus. Chen's going to pick up an Invis rune. The Malefus is there. There's a Sentry though. And with this, I think we may see Fox take the fall. He'll go down to the Invoker and... Couple more kills going the way of immunity. That was a three for nothing trade. As uh, Shatan will heal himself back up and continue farming at this top lane. Yeah, really nicely done to catch the Nyx Assassin off to the side. And I don't think he knew that the Ember Spirit was there. Him coincidentally on the edge of the chrono was great. What? Was that the Sun fountain? <laughs> yep. Oh, I can't believe I, I, mean, I, I can believe I missed it, but I can't believe he got that. What a player. Oh, meanwhile, top lane, Shatan's in trouble. He's going to get first down. That's the Blink Dagger on Puck. They didn't know that the Puck had a Blink there, and that catches him by surprise. But, man, Slicks is fun to watch. This guy's got some mad skills. A lot of people know him back. Well, for the people coming from Hon will know him from uh, pretty much... You know, he was a part of, like, most of the top Hon teams at various points. And making the switch over to Dota 2, definitely expect big things out of this guy. Yeah, from what I understand, like, he used to tear things up on US servers, you know, yeah. from Australia. Uh, in the Han scene, so uh, I guess he's no stranger to Ping, and yeah, he's he's definitely a big name. So I think Immunity are glad to have him. But things looking pretty good so far. Uh, they did know that the Blink Dagger was up, I think, because he came to the assist of the Ember, but that was actually just straight into a black hole. But yeah, okay. Shatan's still going to end up being yeah, being caught out attack. and back for this tier one mid. Sunstrike. Another Sun Strike, more chip damage. Seriously, I mean, that's half of Puck's HP. It does force out the two bottle charges, which Puck's happy to use. And it looks like the tier 1 mid tower will go down. No initiation coming from Immunity. That's their last tier 1 tower standing, and they've only taken one tower themselves, but 
they're getting a decent amount in exchange and uh, execration have their mech up already godot's still working on the mech about 200 gold away and this is going to be a bit of a loss for them though execration get into the roshan pit and challenging this will not be easy for immunity they don't entirely know that it's going on, and just getting here and engaging against well, the team fight of Execration when they've got the mech as well as the Hand of God is going to be quite tricky to do. Yeah, and Vision for Execration is so damn good at the moment. I mean, they've got four, four Observer Woods on the map right now, so they're probably going to be a little bit dark once these fade, just because Dyer's to have four wards on the map at once means Roshan that either at some point earlier you needed to have been blind, or you're going to be blind at some point in the future. But yeah, Immunity? No idea. They smoke yeah. up, but it's too late. They figured yeah. it out too late, like you say. And yeah. immediately, Execration go for a smoke of their own. They swing towards this bottom lane. This tower is deniable, but if you deny it, it's going to break their smoke as well as reveal the fact that they're actually at bottom lane. And Nyx Assassin scouts out the smoke in Vendetta. Stay Blink here. from the puck. Dream Call catches out three. The waning Rift going to hit three as well. This is trouble. Shatan going to Chronosphere the backlines here, but already they've lost two. They make it three as Rubik goes down as well. Double kill for the Ember Spirit. Now Immuni complete on the re retreat. Slick's going to force up to the low ground. Shatan's going to time walk in eight seconds. Looks like no more casualties, but a fantastic smoke from Execration. They use the Nyx Vendetta to lead the charge as well, and they get perfect vision of Immuni and they managed to punish Immunity for just being caught out of position. Yeah, and so much of these fights is just initiation. Like, in that case, the Nyx and the Puck got in first, so yeah. Execration won the fight. And with that fight top, they were completely caught unawares. Immunity started with the Black... started off with the Chronosphere, they lined up a really nice Black Hole. Um, and everybody is relatively squishy right now, and, the, you know, there's no BKBs, there's not a whole lot of defensive items just yet, so... Initiation pretty much decides everything for the yeah. time being. Blink forward from Nyx, gonna hit the Impale on Risk, and he just gets first down. I think that Blink was just picked up based on... Nyx doesn't have any money on top of that, so I think that was a fresh Blink from Nyx. Bottom tower Catching the Rubik attack. by surprise, but I, a Risk could not have been there regardless. Under they are looking for a trade at top lane, and with the Exod Invoker... Radiance bottom uh, tower definitely possible, fallen. but triple TP's coming in. Puck's got a blink. Dream Coil up in three seconds. He's going to look to chase down Slixer. There is a four star. Force TP. Dream Coil... Oh, going to come. It gets the cancel. Slix is now trapped. Dyer's He's going to go down. No way out for Slix. He's looking for the counter kill on the Puck, but the stun comes in from the Nyx. That, must, that TP must have been like 0.1 seconds away. I thought he'd just managed to get the escape on the Puck there. Yeah, Orb Vision is actually really good, so... Uh, not too difficult for, Behold. not too difficult for the puck to get that one. And oh, immunity, that's a really bad trade. They lose the tier two, they lose the Rubik, they get a little bit of damage on the tier one, and they lose uh, the Invoker. So they things are well, but, like, spiraling. A bit. Yeah, they lost a couple T1 towers. Execration, they get roast. They then win a team fight. They then get that nice little pick off there where they defend their top T1 tower, and suddenly it's actually Execration who are leading uh, on the gold graph. Two K gold ahead, but. It's it's one of those lineups for immunity. Any one team fight to go their way, and things will suddenly quickly turn. But it's it's coming down to entirely who gets the better initiation. Puck's going in with the blink silence, catching out some key targets. Or if Shatan leads the fight with a good Chronosphere, so smokes are going to be key this game. I feel as far as giving teams a positioning advantage, and I feel immunity are desperately going to need a gem fairly early on just to deal with this Nyx Assassin Vendetta scouting people out. Yeah, and just for the map control as well. They do also have double Midas running. Balls actually ended up going back for one as well. Yeah. So if this game drags on, I think their their team fight stays pretty much as scary the whole game long. Black Hole, Chronosphere, it's full lockdown. Doesn't really matter what the, the enemy team has. Meanwhile, what, as soon as we start to see maybe BKBs up for the Invoker and the Mirana, that's where the Puck initiation and the Nyx Assassin initiation become much less significant. So I think Immunity, despite the last couple of fights not going their way, they the onus is on uh, Execration to be the ones pushing and applying pressure, because I, I think Immunity are looking pretty good if this goes late. Yeah. But the Puck picks up a Dagon, so this is almost like, well, just rush those BKBs. I, Slick, sure, you maybe want a Necro book, but I feel if Invoker gets a BKB, uh, you get a BKB on Marana, maybe Faceless Void, suddenly Puck becomes a lot less useful in these team fights. And speaking of gems, it's actually the Puck who's picked one up, being passed over from the Chen. So Execration gonna be the first ones to look, get, look to get complete map control, shut Immunity out of this game if they can have their way in. For now, it looks like they can do just that. They've still got the Aegis on their side, so preventing this is gonna be very tricky. Yeah, two minutes on the Aegis, Battle Fury just acquired, so hitting a couple of nice timings right now, and no, I think no reason not to try and 
pressure and punish yeah. these Midas's just a little bit. Because if you factor in the Midas's as well, the net worth is... You know, the net worth Dyer's for the Murana is okay, is but a lot of that is locked up in something that's not really contributing too much to the fights. And only 872 hit points. Falls needs the initiation to go down, otherwise he's just going to absolutely melt. Well, Nyx Assassin going to run past the sentry, but there's no actual vision there, so they don't know the Nyx is in this upon them. Uh, we're going to see the creep wave being spammed out, and uh-oh, Shatan's being caught out. Is the lockdown there? It looks like there will be a Puck Silence, and Shatan, no... No chance to cast a single spell. He's going to go down. Sun's not going to hit the next assassin. Just enough burst damage for Chitan there. He almost got a chance to either Time Walk or Chronosphere. And he was close to his Ag Scepter there, but it's de definitely looking like he may need a BKB uh, after that Aghanim Scepter of his. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah, and just a nice pickoff. Looks like that should probably turn into this tier 2. There is a Glyph available for the Radiant. Yeah, so they're going to pop that for top, right now. Which is... Well, are they trading for top? Nick's Assassin going to TP in. Ball's going to shoot an arrow. Carapace actually not even needed. The tower denied by Uwe. I think Balls could have actually got that last hit, but he was just playing a bit too scared, especially considering Nyx had a Blitz Dagger. And meanwhile, mid lane Ninja Boogie last hit the tier 2. Ford Spirit unable to get the deny. So, not really a trade for immunity yeah. there. They, they kind of hold on. They get a little bit of pressure. That's a little bit of map control going their way as well once that tier 1 uh, goes down. But they're, they're running out of ways to stall. They, they do definitely need to try and... Well, they're going to be forced into team fighting sooner or later. Fortunately for them, the Aegis has just faded, so they're on slightly more even footing now and might be able to push out, maybe go for a smoke, transition into a Moonlight Dark Shadow, Knight. and Alex will pick up a kill, although the Moonlight Shadow is on cooldown for 40 seconds right now. Yeah. Alrighty, well, we'll see uh, Execration with this map. They, they, I think their game plan right now is sure. I don't think they can really push high ground too easily, but they can completely starve Immunity out of this game. Like, try and keep them in their base as much as possible. They're currently farming the Immunity jungle. They'll farm up their Ancients, they'll push out these lanes, and just force Immunity to almost always be stuck as 5. Um, or, or risk just getting picked off so easily by Puck, who has a Dagon. Nick Sesson has a Staff Wizard as well, but I think this may just be for a 4 star for Uwe. But he's level 11 now, so there's a level 2 Vendetta with the extra duration. He's going to go, once again, on the Prowl, looking to just get his team some good, useful information as far as to what immunity you're up to. Oh man, if he reveals this smoke, Risk has a single Sentry Reward, and that's it. Uh, there's two more over on Godot, but he's dealing with top lane at the yeah. moment, so they have to go out without him, and the smoke gets revealed. Where's the Sentry? Oh, the Nyx Assassin. Poking around close to being in range, will he actually walk forward here? I feel like going up up to the high ground as soon as like you just spotted them and revealed their smoke is definitely a, a bad omen, so he's not going to even risk doing that. And they just need a gem, I feel like. It's a big gold investment for support as well as it's something you're likely to give away, but I feel like they can't really move out without a gem because Nyx Assassin's done such a good job just acting as a constant patrol. He's not even really looking for kills, I feel. He's just looking to actually scout out enemy heroes. Yeah, Execration have done a fantastic job of just keeping immunity pinned on their side of the map, making sure that lanes are pressured at all times, so they have at least a little bit of an indication as to whether or not there's a smoke, and that means that well, they are getting a little bit better of the farm situation right now, just because of the map control. And immunity, you can see that they want to make a play. Yeah, they're going to pick up another smoke here. Uh, Roshan actually two minutes out, so... Well, Again, the next assassin response. is like just scouting people out. And even if he doesn't find any heroes, he knows exactly where Immunity are not. So it's a lot easier to guess where they are. There is going to be a Chronos for it mid lane onto AA. Arrow to follow. There is going to be a Grave if BG needs to use it. He will use on AA. This kill is not really guaranteed. If he gets a phase shift into a Blink Dagger, he could escape this one. Doesn't get a chance. And that's a gem picked up for Immunity. That's a huge pick off. So who needs to buy a gem when you can just steal the yeah. enemy teams, apparently? He didn't have the level 4 phase shift there. If he had level 4 phase shift, I think he might have been able to phase into a blink, but unfortunately just level 3 phase shift for the puck. Yeah, and this is the advantage of having the Aghanim Scepter up on the faceless void. You can just use it like a lasso. You, you can use it as a pickoff ability. It's better, yeah, better than lasso almost. <laughs> as far as cooldown goes. 60 second cooldown. I'm, a, I'm liking this offlane void. Is this, is this new meta, Gods? Is this the beginning of something you beautiful? Know, I, Bulldog was pushing the offlane sniper, but I think offlane faceless void is is more legit than the offlane sniper. In fairness, was a duo lane. Um, yeah. But it, it's a hero that doesn't necessarily, you know, to, to do what he needs to do in this game, doesn't need right-click items 
in the slightest. He's just kind of chronosphere with a built-in mobility skill, and that's absolutely fine. It just works really well with the kind of lineup that they're going for, especially with how Balls is building this Marana. I really like the fact that he's right, going uh, a bit more glass cannon. Ninja Boogie in trouble. The Sun's right going to land. Shatan needs a bash here. The Malefist from the high ground. And Ninja Boogie's going to get the slider fist off, but not going to matter. That Chrono. They see the Observe Ward now, too. It looks like they want to go for a D Ward here. and Should be able to get this. Shatan just needs to stand on this little cliff. There we go. Godot goes in. Uh, no? Well, he needs to be in range for the gem and they need vision. So, yeah, he needs to go down and then somebody else can yeah. take the hill. Yeah, there we go. This Buyback. Is forever. Wow, actually, Enigma going to get blinked on here. They did get the D ward off. Godot is in bit of trouble. Has the mech forced to use Cliff. it now? On full oh, retreat here. I don't know about that buyback. He's going to go chasing his slider fist. Suring Chain catches two. Godot in some trouble. He's completely out of mana. Puff going to throw a dream call. I don't think he catches one, though. Blink and Pale catches out risk as well. They're going to lose both the two supports to start this fight. So. The buyback, I guess, worth it. it. It secures them Roshan, so in that sense, definitely worth it. But they were... I think that was just immunity hanging around a bit too long. Yeah, I think immunity were kind of wondering, like, oh, he bought back. Like, what the hell is is that? I guess he's going to try and make his way over here, but I, we probably have enough time to, to retreat out. But nope, find two kills, and without the Enigma alive... He's going to respawn, but Roshan's pretty much already yeah. dead. Yeah, I mean, Void has a Chronos here, but going in is just a bit of a suicide mission. Or maybe you get out of there, but you're not going to achieve Roshan much. Roshan so. has fallen to the dire. Alrighty, we'll see him back off. And another Roshan going the way of Execration. Having that dire side advantage Dyer's working in their favor. And, um, this is this is going to be a game of initiation. Like, looking at stuff like gold leads and items and farm, like, both teams have their pretty big items up. Like, sure, and Immuni want a couple more BKBs. They want the Scythe, the Vice, and the Invoker. They want the Peaky and Enigma. But Ninja Boogie, he's got Battle Fury and Crit on himself. He's going to be a big machine in these fights if he doesn't get dealt with. But if he gets caught out by a Chronosphere, an Arrow, any sort of lockdown, Immunity win the fight. If it's the other way around, Immunity lose the fight. Yeah, and neither team really going for a heck of a lot of survivability again. I mean, we do have the Manta Style up on the Mirana, so that's going to help out against the Silence from the Puck. But... Uh, that's about it, and Invoker currently working towards what looks like a hex, so not gonna be not gonna be yeah. a BKB or anything from him. Yeah, I, I guess hex into BKB will be the plan. I would have liked the, the I think the Necro three is nicest for the D warding potential, but I guess now they've they've already got the gem. Not that they were planning on that, but Shatan he'll go for a BKB himself. And Execration are all up in the immunity jungle. Unfortunately for them, they're in the wrong half of the jungle. They get some sentries down just to make sure there's no wards. And Godot going to get himself back to the base here, so he's going to be fine here. And with Ninja Boogie showing himself mid lane, that gives Immunity a pretty good idea that the rest of the Execration team are there, sitting behind him. And But now Radiant's Immunity pressuring bottom a little bit with the Ford Spirits, but they know they have to defend this high ground, possibly. And Ember and Spirit TP's back, he leaves a Fire Remnant mid, so he can easily come back should a fight break out. Okay, and thinking about it, I think that this, this is actually the right build from... Balls and Slicks. The two initiators and the two big lockdown heroes for immunity do look like they're going for BKBs. So I think so long as the only problem is going to be if they don't know where Execration are. If they can yep. set up their ranks properly when the team fight arrives, then they should be able to have Enigma and Void on the front lines, get down at least one of the ultimates uh, on a couple of heroes, and then you know the Marana and the Invoker can sit pew pewing from the back. But if they get jumped from the side, or the Invoker and the Mirana get isolated uh, away from the big lockdown, then yep. that's where their team fight can completely fall apart. It depends a bit who jumps them, because if Balls gets jumped by the Puck with a Blink Silence or even a, a Searing Chain, he can still Manta out of that. It's if it's the Nyx mm -hmm. Assassin. Nyx is probably the one big initiate you have to really worry about, because his, his Blink Impale could likely decide this game. Yeah. Top yeah, and he's played very well attack. so far. Yeah. There is a BKB on Enigma, and what? There's nothing to actually cancel a BKB black hole. Unless, actually, Chen can get a Dark Troll, which should be something he looks out for moving towards the late game, because he definitely needs that Incinator to deal with this BKB black hole. Yeah, the cast range isn't the best, and no. black hole AoE did get buffed recently, so it could be a little bit difficult, but definitely something to maybe keep yeah. in mind. Well, for now, uh, Immunity, I think, just happy to get these, farm these next couple items. They're pretty close to getting the two BKBs on their initiators. Pretty, They've got the Scythe of Vice for Slicks if they want to buy it. Maybe a little bit worried about whether or not they have uh, buybacks and 
Balls has his Mantel, has 2k gold on top of that, so we'll see where he looks ahead next. And from Uni, they say, well, look, you guys have Aegis, we don't want to fight you anyway, so we're happy to sit back, play things a bit passively for the time being. Yeah, it's a two and a half minute window for Execration to maybe make use uh, of this Aegis. We'll see what they do. They just got to an item on Ember Spirit, so he's not going to be able to complete something in the next two and a half minutes, and the puck is really close to Hex, so maybe they can go for like a minute of pushing uh, once they have that Hex up, but they might just end up not getting a whole lot of use out of this Aegis and uh, making sure that they have that, that Hex complete. Yeah. They can wait, wait for the next one, and e even during the time with the window where they don't have Aegis, I, they've got a lot of ganking potential. At the same time, I don't think they want to drag this game too late, because the longer this goes, Chen's going to become less of a big presence in the game. Even Dazzle, like, Shadow of Grave, one of the, um, one of the best skills late game in a lot of scenarios, but Dazzle, there's so many big AoE ulties that Dazzle's likely to get just killed in these fights. Not to mention, just, it's, it's AoE hitting a lot of these Execration heroes. So you can save one, but you're not going to be able to save everyone. Yeah, and looks like Slicks is actually going for an Aghanim Scepter. So... Oh, wow. Yeah, That's it's... Interesting choice. I think it... Honestly, I think it's a, it, it's not Dyer's as controversial an item as it maybe should be, and maybe that gives away my opinion on it a little bit. Like, it's really good if you're an amazing Invoker player and you've got level 25 and everything is maxed out and all of your abilities are relevant, but if he gets this within, like, the next minute or so and he's still level 17, level 18, his Wex-based abilities are still not really that scary. Yeah, you he's just trying to just point yeah. So, even, even Chaos Media is like, not, not, they don't have very long range with just the level 2 Wex, so. Yeah, I feel like he could have pushed it maybe even one item further back yeah. in his build, because I don't know if it's going to change his effectiveness that much. Okay. Well, I guess Immuni has somewhat realized this game could likely go well into the 50 60 minute mark where Heroes are going to be hitting level 25, but. Slick's preparing early. Hopefully we, hopefully we don't get a 100 plus minute game. We've had one of those and that's that's enough for a lifetime. I'll tell you that. You, were you not impressed, Gods? I was not no. impressed by having having a 100 minute game. No. <laughs> okay, but is is the problem with the 100 minute game or was the problem with that particular I think it was yeah, that 100 particular 100 minute game. minute game. Yeah. Because by the sound of it, like I took your advice, I haven't gone back and watched it, but it sounded like it was just sloppy Dota, both teams in a stalemate, like not really all that entertaining to watch. But I think if you had 100 minutes of back and forth, that would be like a a testament to Dota as a game. Really. I feel like, and these lineups just in general, like, if you get a really long game, these lineups will just produce a lot more entertainment. With, like, Enigma and Faceless Void, you got some Big good ulties there. Not to mention Invoker, level 25 Invoker with Ag Scepter, so... I feel like this game just inherently going to be more interesting than the Morphling farming eight slots of items and... What, who else? The Tinker. Tinker farming eight, nine items is not fun to watch, because Tinker never actually fights, like, a Void or a, an Invoker will. Uh... I I don't know. Chains Tinker with the whole bunch of items sounds sounds pretty impressive. It, but, you know, it sounds it. impressive, but it was, nope. it was not. BKB picked up for ball, so he goes back for the defensive item now. So probably goes now into some kind of actual damage output. I think Mjoln, Mjoln is probably your best bet as far as damage output goes. Desolator maybe uh... a bit late for a Deso. I think Deso is still alright. There's still tier 2s for them to get through, even if they yeah. win a fight. So, I think the Desolator lets them threaten threaten a tier 3, threaten a Rax, maybe force it a buyback if they win something here, and it just cuts down on the number of fights that they need to win, um, to win the game, maybe. So, well, we'll see what he does. I think Immunia are looking at like this, like, this, this Ember Spirit's really freaking scary right now, but if this game goes into the 16 minute mark, Ember Spirit will somewhat fade out because he's... It's going to get to a point where Immunity have so many items, they can just throw ulties to kill the Ember Spirit, and then there's no other damage output. Ember Spirit is going to be probably about 80 to 90 percent of the damage output from Execration in the late game. Puck will do a decent amount as well, he's got the Hex to go with it, but it's going to be all about the Ember Spirit, and Immunity have so many big ulties to control him, not to mention the Scythe of Vice Invoker. Yeah, and they're getting their BKBs, but they haven't used them yet. So they still have that full window of not caring about the Nyx Assassin and the Puck in fights at all. 
So, well, we'll see when they when they choose to start moving out, choose to start making some plays. But looks like for now they're pretty content to just continue farming up. Don't have a whole lot of map control uh, at the moment, but they have just the single ward up at the moment. Not a very it gets a bit of vision towards the mid lane, but this ward's not offering immunity that much. And they are going to go for a smoke up here, so this could be. Pretty big team fight. The mysterious Midas on mid might. It's, it's never going to give it away. On, You'd have to be like, watching so closely. Like a hawk. Yeah. No, here we go. Oh, there could potential for a two hero Chrono he, Chronosphere. Shatan does end up throwing it here. Deathling Blast to follow the grave. Already being used on Uwe, so he's going to switch his t attention to the Dazzle. Dazzle as well as Nyx both going to go down. Gem actually drops here. Risk going to pick up the second gem for Immunity. Nyx buys back, but that's not going to matter too much. Meanwhile, the Ember Spirit has to be a bit careful. He knows there's no Chronosphere, but there is a black hole. And Moonlight Shadow being there. They've got no detection for this one. He lives it. Oh no, Godot. The arrow going to land on AA, but he was thinking, look, let's just solo kill this Ember Spirit and maybe win the fight. Now Shatan in trouble. He's getting chain stunned by the Sentinel. War stops. Great micro coming in from Fox. And Enigma just going to TP on now. Then two heroes take the fall. Faceless Void as well as Rubik. And that was both gems, I think. It went from Immunity having both gems, and now we're looking at Execration with both gems. Oh boy. That's... Oh no. Not... Not what Immunity were hoping for there. It started off well. They got the two kills, forced a Nyx Assassin buyback, but then it ended poorly. And now they're going to see Roshan go to the Execration team once again. Ah, that's it's it's hard to see stuff like that happen. Uh, Godot's going to be kicking himself for that black hole a little bit, I think. And and now it's on cooldown as well. So Execration are well aware of like, oh hey, we're going to pick up Roshan, and we have a minute where black hole isn't available. Two minutes. Yeah. So we can just go and siege the high ground. Roshan the idea was pretty good. I, I still feel even yeah. if he, even if they solo kill the Ember Spirit, though, if he has buyback, he just buys back and five remnants in, and they may lose the fight anyway. So I'm not convinced it was even the right plan because even if it, that even if you kill him once, he still buys back, and you all, you all may you may lose two to three heroes. So yeah, well, being caught like that on the retreat was never the plan to begin with, right? It was yeah, like that's get the pickoffs, get out before or. Just stay grouped and continue to fight them as they sort of trickle in uh, one by one. But Execration, Execration did a good job. Cheese and Aegis, they want to maybe push high ground here. At least they're signaling towards it. Puck's got the Cheese, Aegis on the uh, Ember Spirit, who's got 2.8k gold now. I think he's actually got items. Yeah, he's got another Crystallis, so he's going double Daedalus. All about that single target burst damage. And that's what you kind of want against the BKBs. You need that single target burst damage that if you hit get a crit on them, they'll take lose half their HP almost. Yeah, and it, it's odd, but it's also more consistent, I would say. Like, I mean, they do have some summons, and they've got the Eidolons and stuff, so there are plenty of targets to be able to to cleave off of, but um, it means that you're not 100% reliant on things being clumped up just to do good damage, and they get the Hex out. He takes a lot of damage. He's got the uh, the Aegis on himself, though. Blink and Pell coming in. That's going to catch out Shatan. Shatan does not get the Chronosphere off, at least not yet. Finally, we'll get to cast it. He's just going to try to fight his way out of this one. Puck, he's right-clicking away on Shatan. That's going to force out a Time Walk, and he's actually got himself a gem now. Leap out from the Mirana. Took Execration, not going to lose a single hero here, but they haven't actually done that much damage to the tower, so the Siege will continue. Immunity forced to use a couple of ultimates, and now Malefus out onto Ninja Boogie. The, the fight's not over just yet. Execration, they use up most of their Radiant ulties as well, but... Muni now. It's going to come a lot down to the Invoker. Does have the Aghanim set to start with the Tornado. He's going to get Blink impaled on, and that Slider Fist doing a ton of damage. Fire Room afterwards. Slick's going to turn around and Hex Ninja Boogie. It looks like he will go down. The T4 Towers will help out. No Chronosphere for 20 seconds. Can they time the arrow balls? No arrow for the time being. Sunstrike is there. Actually going to be off the mark. Uses it too soon. Ninja Boogie's still in trouble. He uses the Fire Room now. Will escape to it. Just enough to get him out of there. That was close, and he's going to be sent home by the Chen. No Fire Remnants left to TP back to, but he'll just TP himself down towards the bottom lane. Close yeah, to getting two kills on the, the Ember Spear there. Slicks went in for the Tornado, then I think he like reinvoked Meteor and Deafening, and they were both on cooldown. So ah. he ended up just kind of standing around, uh, looking a little bit looking a little bit silly there. But they do still manage to burn the Aegis. Didn't really lose anything. They've got the black hole back up. The Chronosphere is 60 seconds. It's back up as well. Uh, and so a pretty successful high ground defense for Possibly them. Possibly going to see some kills here at bottom lane. There's a... Uh, Ember Spirit gets hexed up. Leap forward. Oh, actually, there's Nyx Assassin as well as Chen waiting. And this is going to get turned around. I think Slix is in trouble. He's going to BKB TP. Should be able to get out. Yeah, Ninja Boogie. Start right clicking. Try to get some crits, but not going to happen. And 
slicks. No TP. He's going to go back into Ghost Fog here. He's pr he's playing like the Nyx Assassin, just looking for those those kills, scouting around using the Ghost Walk, but he got a bit blindsided there. He saw the Ember Spirit, thought Ember Spirit was alone, but it was not the case. Nyx oh, man, is he going to be found here? Oh, he doesn't check oh. it fully. Oh, man. He checked entirely under the tower, but didn't go all the way into the little pocket. That's a lucky break for slicks. Yeah, that... He, he does have buyback, in fairness. It's still a yeah, it's still a big kill to be getting. Yeah. A lot of golden experience to be to be taken by execution, not to mention just forcing out a buyback. So they used the edges and the cheese. Uh, they didn't really get anything out of it aside some aside for some damage on the tier three. Yeah. So maybe this is yeah, immunity slowly building their way towards an opportunity. They aren't really getting out farmed. The double Midas is carrying them pretty well, despite the map control disadvantage, so Graf's not moving too much, and again, I think we agree that if this if this goes ultra late, then I think things are are looking alright, so I really want to see how Execration play from here, yeah. because they, they did get pretty aggressive with the way that things worked out uh, over at the Tier 3, they went all in after the Hex uh, on the Ember Spirit, and I think they got fewer kills than they expected, so we'll this see, and another like... smoke from Immunity. Yeah, another smoke from you. This thing I feel like Secretion could have done earlier is maybe get a couple Necro books on the Puck and the Nyx Assassin, just to help go with the pushes, but... Maybe oh, it'd be too late. Immunity gonna get a Hex on BG. This will be an easy kill on the Dazzle. Ember Spirit nearby. No side fist coming in. The Tornado off the mark. Nice blink out coming out from Nyx Assassin. Gets himself out of danger. Buyback from the Dazzle. And with that, Immunity should just look to retreat. They've got all their ulti still. The Hex is the only thing on cooldown, which is not really too big a deal, but... Dazzle actually buying back and somewhat unnecessarily. Not the most worthwhile smoke, but it's a kill nonetheless. Yeah, the Dazzle buyback didn't didn't accomplish anything, and I think it just shows that Execration are like, oh man, this is actually getting this is actually getting pretty bad. Like we've had these Aegis opportunities, and we haven't been able to use them at all. So w what do we do? I guess we have to start we have to start going aggressive. We have to start trying to make some plays. Yeah. They do have that second Daedalus up. So, Ember Spirit's damage is growing, but like you said earlier, it's double initiator and one core. Um, and that can get a little bit dicey as yeah. we head towards the late game. And Pux, he does okay down. He hasn't gone back for any more points in the Dagon. This Dagon purchase is ultimately not really paying off that much for him. And I think he's going for a Lincoln's, actually. Yeah. I. Yeah. It's gonna be, I guess the Lincoln's not bad against the Scythe of Ice, potentially. <laughs> Slicks. Turns the Dark Troll into a little into a little piggy before he actually Midas's it. Bit of miss Micro there. But uh, Dyer's top you know, tower I, is under I, this game is, I, I guess, a stalemate to to a large extent. Execration are the ones with the better map control, but Immunity are the ones with the better team fight. So what results is just both teams kind of farming. Neither team like Execration don't want to push or properly engage in the team fight of Immunity. And at the same time, Immunity can't really move out because they have no map control. Yeah, well, both teams are running extremely blind right now, which is why we're seeing all of this this yeah. five manning. But execration are really afraid. There's like always a hex on the front lines. They're getting hexed out of fog, and we haven't even seen the full fury of the the chronosphere. And Close there's a the blink dagger with a gem. Could just straight up chronosphere this. He sees the Nyx assassin. Nyx is trying to hide here. He's got Yules and blink, so it's pretty hard to bring him down unless they want to use a chronosphere just for the Nyx there. Killing him would have been difficult. Now they see the Ember Spirit with the Slider Fist, so they know more or less where Execration are, and it seems, it seems Immunity make a decision that they do not want a team fight right now. Come on, Slicks, it's time for the split pushing Sun Strikes. You, you Sun Strike the ranged creep on the opposite lane and impart a tiny bit of momentum. Wow. Okay. To it. It's uh, split pushing against Ember Spirit, unless you actually have not, heroes not that there. Is, yeah, not that just, helpful. It's not going to happen. <laughs> He clears out one creep wave bottom, and he's got the fire remnant top if he wants to ulti to it. He's just going to waddle his way back towards the shop. He's got 3.3k gold. We'll see what he gets next. Another battle fury, I, I think, think? Battle fury is... Yeah, I agree. Or you go defensive, or you get your Lincoln Sphere at this point, I think, is also not a bad idea. But I think... I feel like there's no defensive item here that keeps you alive... Like, if you get Chronoed or you get yep. Black Hole. I think it's you have more, to do... Like, in theory, you could block one Hex. Like, if you block a Hex, yeah. it keeps... It will just prevent... Like, maybe they see it and they don't use Hex, but it makes it harder for the, like, Invoker to solo kill you. 
This next assassin, these these drive-bys. Oh, and Shatan <laughs> considers it. Yeah. With some pump fakes. He's almost hit 16 as well, so that's going to be a level 3 ulti, which gets the 6 second duration, as well as the, uh... Oh, sorry, yeah, 6 second duration, so an extra full second on that. Not a bad pickup. Nemo Balls has gone for the Desolator, so he gets his team some damage output now. And the push seems to be coming. From Execration there, at least, I mean, for them, I think the main thing is here, they want to clear out the Radiant Jungle of any ward so they can get map control, and that's going to allow them to take this fourth Roshan. They're not really so much as looking for a push here, as they're just looking to maybe find a pick off, get wards down, make sure they de ward as well the entire map. Nyx has a gem, um, and there's what a gem on the radiant side, two uh, gem on the void. So both teams with a gem. There was a third gem somewhere. I'm not sure what happened to that though. Uh, there's two gems on execration, one on the Nyx, one on the Chen, and there's one okay. gem on the okay. on the void. So that's the total. Okay. Chen now necro three. So we'll see. Necrobook on Chen as well as Nyx. And this is where I feel Execration could have maybe played this differently earlier on. If they got multiple Necrobooks for the push, they could have maybe got that tier 3 mid tower and the Raxes when they actually pushed high ground. But they didn't have any Necrobooks there. Puck could have gone yeah. for Necrobook instead of this Dagon. Slash Lincolns and, well, it may be a different game. But at the same time, um, Chen obviously was never going to farm a Necro 3 until much later in the game as well. Yeah, and as far as Execration's plans were concerned, like that Aegis and Cheese were Aegis and Cheese guaranteed racks, um, but didn't end up panning out that way at all. So they want the safety, you know, they want the the safety blanket of the Aegis and Cheese back. But I think you're you're right. They do have to go for they they have to go for the Necro books. They have to do something else to maybe try and close up the game because it feels like if things continue along this path with the Ember Spirit farming on one side, but Void, Marana, and Invoker all farming uh, on the other, then they're, they're not really getting anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's what Ch Ch Chitan's doing is like some aerobics here. <laughs> yeah, that's Void Skating. <laughs> void Skating, is that what we're calling it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I like it. Well, that's, that's probably the, the most interesting thing going on at the moment. You know what I found out when I was uh, in Melbourne for my, my break mm -hmm. from the uh, BTSQ? There actually exists ice skating in Australia. I, I don't know why I didn't think yeah. there was ice skating in Australia, but for some reason I didn't think it existed, except in the America, because it's such a big American thing. No, we have we have ice skating rinks in Australia. I've been, I've been a few times. I, I did not fall on my face, which I was... I haven't ice skated since I was like... Oh man, old. double damage, Ever Spirit. It's not actually that much. They get the Hex on the Excellent. Dazzle. This will be a kill. And Execration, Dazzle has no buyback. They get the Kronos for a Ninja Boogie. He does a buyback, but it looks like he will go down. Impel only going to catch up one. The BKB is there. The Black Holder follow. Only catching the Nyx. AA walks into it on the puck. The Deathly Blast will push him out a little bit, but the damage has been done. Ember Spirit with the buyback here. Arrow up in five seconds. Puck's a bit stuck here. Time walk going to catch him out. The Sun's right there as well. Not even needed. Puck goes down. Immediate buyback. It looks like Execration want to try and contest Roshan. Not sure they really can. Fox nearby as well. He's actually summoned the Necrobooks. These Necrobooks just going to feed though. No one wants to kill the melee one. As time walk out. It looks like the Ford Spirit tanked the Necrobook damage. Nice play from Immunity. And they they catch their first big break of this game, I feel. Like, that's the first actual team fight they've won. Yeah, they do need to be careful though. Because they popped BKBs. They popped Chrono. They popped Black Hole. And the only thing they've that's going to be up man. soon is the Chrono, Chrono again. Yeah, they're going to have the Chrono again soon, but no Black Hole. Though they know that if they Dying kill the Ember again, he's just attack. gone forever. Yeah. Black so. Hole's the only spell they're really missing, though. Like they make Moonlight Shadow is not really a big deal. Rubik's actually stolen the Nyx Impale, so they've got another AOE stun at their disposal as well. This is huge for immunity, and I think with this T2 Tower down, they they may actually go for Roshan, because for Execration to contest this, they're risking losing the game. Because if they contest this and die, it's all over. There's no buyback for Ember Spirit, there's no buyback for Puck. So unless immune uh, Execration decide, we've got to make a play now, we've got to try and win the game. Oh, Shatan, he's going for a play. Chrono Ooh, no Chronosphere, there's an immediate blink from the Puck. He did not hang around in that phase shift any longer than he needed to. Yeah, at the... On the flip side, I feel like they have to defend Roshan because they were losing fights with Aegis and Cheese. If you pass those two over to Immunity instead, I think it's going to be much more one-sided. Arrow. 
Team is on by. The Australian team looking good here. This is their first real test against SEA teams, and Shatan goes in with the Chronosphere, catches out Ninja Boogie. Is there a Sunstrike? Any damage up? It looks like they'll go for the Nyx instead, so they don't get Ninja Boogie. Execration's still alive, but he gets hexed up. He's gonna have to be sent back home with a grave. This should be okay. Ninja Boogie will survive to fight another day. Meanwhile, the puck's going with a dream call. He's gonna orb his way out of there, but Shatan's chasing, looking for the bash. No bash. Shatan says, where is it? Finally coming through. Impale off the mark. Arrow gonna be off the mark. He almost blinks into it. That was very close for your puck. He orbs onto the high ground, jaunts himself up there, and well, just the Nyx Assassin on the sidelines. Ember Spirit kept alive by a Test of Faith plus Grave. Puck barely kept alive as well. If Arrow or Telekinesis catches him, he would have died. Chronosphere's back up in 20 seconds as well. Like Utility Void, man. I, Off lane legit. Void! Oh, you man. I, I, with the Agonite Scepter, you don't have to play this hero like a carry. Thanks, you. Well, I guess it's it's still like a core hero. Like it's they run like a true tricore lineup with Invoker, Mirana, and Void. Yeah, they yeah don't but he can still go for like a Mjolnir here and still have something to say as far as right clicking in team fights. Yeah, is concerned. Mjolnir would be pretty huge to pick up. It gives him some much needed attack speed because right now he has zero attack speed. His damage output is not that impressive on its own, unless he's hitting time locks inside Cronus here, where you get what you get double damage from current uh, from a time lock. Yeah. Yeah, the time lock damage is doubled. He might... Well, Mjolnir would be nice, but I think the more likely choice is probably AC, if he manages to to get the farm up for it. But... Well, I think no matter what happens, things damage. are looking good. I didn't realize time lock was magic damage. Yeah. Interesting. Tidbit. Random stuff. I'm rambling. <laughs> Execration is How many beers now. have you had, gods? I've I just heard. had the singular. Ah, okay. That was my, with my my dinner. Merlini cooked for us tonight. It was a rare treat. Is, who normally cooks in the BTS house? Is it is it Brian? It's normally Brian. Well, he cooks like four or five nights a week, and then we we fend for ourselves some of the other nights, and then Ben cooks normally once a week. But with my shadow. Here we go. Oh, they scattered the smoke, and it, actually execration realized they threw down the, the weave and oh, blink out out of the way from the impale. It's Assassin still alive, he's hexed up, and it looks like Uwe gonna be the first one to go down. Risk taking a lot of damage at the back line. Only one hero dead. Gojo uses BKB here. BG through the next one for Enigma actually goes down to the slide of his Chronosphere doesn't hit anyone. Whiffed ultimate completely. Shatan gets the hell out of there. One slide of his could finish him off, especially with a crit or two. AA's chasing. Ninja Boogie, no fire run for the time being. I think he gets close enough for a slide of fist. Shatan needs hope for some RNG. Doesn't get a crit, and Ninja Boogie will not get that kill, but. Two for two trade, both supports for both supports. I guess it's a fairly even trade. He almost one shot the entire team. The with with that one side of fist. Yeah, that was yeah. absurd. Well, it looks like uh, Execration feel like they can go for Roshan. Muni should have a pretty good idea about this. Double buyback, so this will force a retreat at least for now. Muni Boogie going to TP home, pick up another item maybe? He's got 5.2k gold. Well, yeah, surely it's an. Well, I get. I think it's either another Battle Fury or a Rapier for him at this point, honestly. Yeah, he's got buyback in 40 seconds, and I think Rapier is actually not a bad idea. Especially if they feel like they're in a desperate situation, I think Rapier is probably the best damage up, but to go with the double data. Versus. Yeah, at this point, it's all about the team fights, really. Like, just whoever gets the initiation. And so much of it is on RNG as well. Like, if the Ember Spirit gets good angles and good crits, then he can just wipe out the entire immunity lineup in one fell swoop, yeah. so... Well, both teams completely avoiding one another. Execration went through a smoke through the enemy jungle, knowing that two immunity heroes don't have buyback. At the same time, it's just the two supports. And immunity, they're actually on the high ground here, with wards with the better position if they uh, manage to find any opponents here. Shatan going to just poke his head near the Roshan pit. Arrow gonna scout this out. Nyx Assassin almost gets caught by it. They get the vision they need. Tornado gonna give them some extra vision as well, but it also reveals to Execration exactly where Immuni are positioned. Them. Both teams now know where one another is, but neither team looking to commit to the fight. Blitz time. Yeah. What is this? This is some YOLO plays from Slicks. Ghostwalk onto the high ground when there's. There should be a gem. Yeah, Chen has a gem. As well as Puck. No, no Puck gem at the moment. Yeah. Worth pointing out that there's two massive buybacks Dyer's available right now. The Ember Spirit and the Invoker. They both have a way to get back into the fight uh, if things go wrong. So 
definitely worth keeping an eye out for. But right now, both teams just kind of posturing, vying for position. Immunity definitely want Roshan, but there's no way for them to secure it without getting a pick off this first. Next. That's so brave. So, so brave. If the Hex is there, he's instantly dead. Yeah, and the Ember hasn't died since he bought back, right? So this next death oh. is actually going to be... No if, if he doesn't buy back, it's going to hurt. Oh, he oh arrow. arrow! Ninja Boogie, he's got buyback just now. There's going to be a BKB from the Enigma. Not using the Black Hole right now. Is there going to be a sandback? The Black Hole going to catch up. Fox Ember Spirit, he goes down. He's got the buyback used immediately. He avoids getting thrown up in the air. The Chronosphere comes out, catches out two. This is going to be the death of the Nyx as well as the Chen. It looks like the Chaos Medium ensuring it. Where is that Ember Spirit? He needs to come and make some big DPS stuff happening. 4k gold on him. He's not spending it. Looks like Immunity happy to back off for the time being. No buyback on Nyx or the Chen. He's going to actually... Slits may go down. He's got buyback himself. 8k gold. He's actually BKB'd up. He's not dead just yet. And if the Ember Spirit dies, it's all over. Slider Fist goes through. Doesn't kill off anyone, though. One Deso hit onto the Dazzle. And Immunity is so low here. I think they just comp do a full retreat. Maybe Risk is going to go down. Looks like... Yeah, no Dagon. One right click will finish him off. At the same time, they want to contest Roche. But everyone's so low here. So they're going to go full retreat. And they may actually end up losing Rotem. Which, considering Ninja Boogie has no buyback. This is a pretty important to execration if they can get this. But this Roche is so slow. Yeah, it's we're 56 minutes into the game. Roshan now scales all the way through. So he's actually really difficult to to bring down just for these guys. Yeah. And, and hey, back out. a bad Roshan hero. Braxton yeah, he's Roshan. awful. Oh, he's and gone. Reaver. Reaver. Uh, what? A bit... Wacky. I survive one more Mirana right click. Look at me, guys. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't know. I think can you, it's. Can you life steal slide a fist? Like if you pop a satanic. Uh, I'm fairly sure yes. I'm, I think I've but... asked this before and I couldn't remember. Yeah. But, uh, there was no conclusion come from coming from out of it. Yeah, I, and I feel like you asked me last time as well, and I said I'm like 99% sure, but not a hundred. So I guess we'll we'll have to see. He's level 25, and speaking of high levels, Invoker's level 23, and this is where this Ag Scepter on Slicks is pretty huge. He's still got a Midas with 9k gold. Slicks, get that Refresher, man. Maximum style points, that's the way to go. In. Oh. Arrow. Oh. They see the Chen, they don't want to commit to this one. I guess they're a bit worried about getting caught overextending. Uh, they don't have Wrist there on the, the Rubik. Speaking of Rubik, he doesn't even have a Blink Dagger or a Force Staff at this point in the game, and this is where I feel... Let Risk get a Blink Dagger up and just have your Enigma buy a few wards here. Because a Blink Dagger on a Rubik could theoretically decide a fight if he's able to steal something like an Impale from a Nyx Assassin. If any, any, even a Shallow Grave from a Dazzle, he could theoretically steal a big spell with a Blink Dagger that could turn the fight around. Yeah, this feels like this is what happens to Risk every game. I guess, especially when they put... You know, I, I mentioned... In the draft, that they sometimes have the go dot four position Mirana and slicks. I mean, Risk plays the really hard yeah. five paws, but that's just kind of the team dynamic uh, in general. And while I agree, I think a you know blink dagger could make a pretty big difference, and it means that he can sit on the fringes of the fight and then blink in after a side of fist, for example. Because right now he can only sit yeah. on the very edge. If he's anywhere in the side of fist AOE, he's probably just dead immediately. Even a, yeah, like you say, Blink Telekinesis could win the fight. A Blink Telekinesis onto the Ember Spirit could theoretically be the lockdown they need to kill him. But for now, Slicks does pick up that Refresher, so we're going to see a lot of spell use out of this Invoker. Keep your eyes out for Mr. Trent Tucker. Yeah, doubles up his BKB as well, which yeah. is... And double Hex, Hex, so that's very, very scary at this point. Yeah. Roshan's still up, and we saw Ember Spirit just trying to just sneak his way in there, but every Sunstrike coming out is generally scouting out Roshan from Slick, so no real way for Execration to get this one, and they've got two and a half minutes before the Ember Spirit buyback's back online, so it's going to be tricky. He buys his Satanic, and the other worry is, even when his buyback's back up, will he even have enough gold? He needs to farm about 2.5k to actually get that buyback money. Yeah, this is such a stalemate right now. It's like... I think Immunity are ready to break the stalemate, though. They know there's no Ember Spirit buyback. Oh, Ember Spirit very close to getting caught out there. There was a, a four-staff tornado. If that tornado hits and it's followed up by a Hex, it's trouble. So it has gone for the Satanic now. I think you just give Immunity Roshan, or do you contest it? Uh, it's too low. I think yeah. it's... That's, that's just going to be Roshan going their way. Roshan and I've just got word as well that it looks like, yeah, Satanic does definitely work with Side okay. of Fist. So I guess he can use it to, to top off. 
But again, I feel that if he if he's ever brought, I, I guess the thing is if he if he gets brought low, he might be graved, and then he can use the satanic to refill It'll be his like full health. HP. Like, so yeah, if you, if you slide a fist with his damage output and satanic pop, you'll get back to full HP. So I think it's not a bad item choice by any means. Probably better than the Lincolns or the BKB as far as survivability goes. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that much. Though his his damage is still pretty scary, but again, it's just so reliant on I am grouping up and oh, Dyer's getting some lucky crits. Has been killed. Oh, they find the, the courier in the enemy jungle. That was, I think, I'm not sure what that was delivering. It's like an enemy uh, has top most of his items. Is under attack. Uh, I can check. Just give me a sec. Yeah, I gotta change my hot key. I always mess it up because it overlaps with one of the normal, one of my normal hotkeys. Here, I'll find something. Well, Roshan Aegis now on the side of the Radiant. Radiant Courier also dies. Yeah, so Radiant Courier was just a Sentry Ward and Balls's Ring of Aquila and Dire was nothing on it. Okay. So I think that was just delivering a TP or something to Ember. Yeah, well, we've reached the sad state of the game, 60 plus minutes in, where Curry is a, a feeding. Becoming food, sacrifices. Yeah. Is it, is it time to go 100 minutes again, gods? I, uh, 100 I minutes of stalemate? So. Probably not. Yeah. Immunity definitely going to make a play with this Aegis and Cheese. Unless, unless um, Execration can somehow just keep the lanes pushed out uh, as well as they've been doing. Like it's, it's surprising that the power dynamic is... At least as far as the lane position is concerned, has shifted to immunity again. Now being pinned uh, inside of their base, they've somehow. even got map control. They've got four observer wards on the map. Three of them almost all around these dire ancients, like all scouting out the same spot. But one nice ward near the top lane. But they're yeah, they're not really getting much out of this. Fox needs to use that necro book to de ward. Some of that necro man. You're not fighting anytime soon. There is a gem on the Nyx, which is I guess what he thinks. Like oh, there's no wards near us. Nyx will come bottom lane and scout out those wards shortly. Yeah. Ever considers changing the force staff for anything? There's there's nothing that I, springs to mind as like. I thought about that as well, and I just didn't like Scotty. Know what? De Maybe I think Daedalus is okay, like for the crit damage output. More Mjolnirs. I've seen Who like knows? late game invokers right click pretty hard, but we're gonna see a smoke yeah. coming in from Immunia. They've got the flank here. This could be a dead Ember Spirit. He's making his way bottom lane. They haven't scouted him just yet. Shatan, but I think see him soon. Oh, Enigma has the BKB. Black Hole gonna come. It lands. It gets countered by the Shatan Chronosphere, though. They want Ninja Boom. Impale stolen. Off here. Impale stolen from from uh, Riss. That's gonna catch up two heroes here. And Ember Spirit escapes. They're only gonna get the Nyx Assassin. Man, Shatan, you should have had faith in the Godot Black Hole. The Black Hole was on the mark, but he immediately cancelled it. If they get the full Black Hole plus full Chrono, I think they get both those two kills. Yeah, there was just no damage up, but that's the full six seconds of lockdown. But and plus the impale, plus the tornado. Did he? The, the, the chrono the also caught out balls, I guess, in the Marana. Yeah, yeah, that was. And, and Invoker wasn't nearby oh. either. He's had some good chronos this game. Not, not that one though. Yeah, that that was not spectacular. They still going for this push. Nix has no buyback, so it's just one less hero and one less hero with two annoying AOE stuns to to deal with. So no carapace, no impales, coming into this fight. Dyer's bottom there is an Ember Spirit buyback. Actually, yeah, there's an Ember Spirit buyback. That's the one big thing that Execration have to try and stall this game out. And looks like Immunity going to back off. They've got no Dyer's Black Hole. They have got the Chronosphere back up already, attack. but not willing to take much more of a risk here in the bottom lane. If they wait for Black Hole, they're not going to have the Aegis anymore. They TP out. Slixer goes mid, and that means he can't TP back for the fight. Sure, he's got boots to travel, but that's one minute on cooldown, so... Nah, no, you refresh your BOTs, and then you... <laughs> That would be next level. You TP in front of where your opponents can see, so they're like, oh, Invoker can't fight, let's engage 5v4. And then he refreshes the TP. That would be like the most next level play. No, and first you Sunstrike, and then you refresh, and then you Sunstrike again, and then as you BOT in, the double Sunstrike blows somebody up, and we give Slicks a round of applause, and, you know. <laughs> no, I don't think that's, that's ever going to happen, but well, fun to think about at least. I'm Slicks still... passes 10k gold now. Wow, okay. So. I. I hmm. And he's got the. I guess maybe you could. The one thing you can kind of do is. Well, I guess you want the refresher in the middle of a fight, but like you could theoretically like replace the refresher when it's Double on cooldown damage. with another item. Yeah. 
Like, you can definitely have they go fixed seven, the... eight slots. Have they fixed the Sentry Ward exploit where you buy a bunch of Sentry Wards and then somebody on your team buys one Sentry Ward and then you give all of your Sentry Wards to that guy and then you sell all of those Sentry Wards for half the cost so you can you can transfer 50% gold? I'm not sure, but I hope so. I imagine, like, we don't have rules against it, but I imagine pro tournaments, if that started happening from teams, I imagine tournaments would say, look, this Radiant's isn't allowed. Pulling is gold attack. is not part of... Look, I think it's it's Valve's job to fix it. If it's yeah, like, top tower is I don't think attack. it's the tournament's job to police it. But anyway, by breaking out, Dream Cold catches two here. Slicks is uh, uses one hex, may look to refresh soon. He's gonna drop the media and drop the meatballs and everything. The midnight pulse is there, but Enigma's already gone down. And Ninja Boy on the front line is doing a decent amount of damage. Next one to a central fire and a double buyback coming from Uni. As it looks like Balls is going to go chasing after once a Nyx assassin with the Tornado going to cause him some problems here. There is a black hole. The Cronus here, really lovely. Catches out three. The Chen's going to look to send up someone home here. Unfortunately, the Dabble's going to be brought down. There's the kill on the Ember Spirit. And now the Time Walk after. Chen going to be the next one to take a fall, it looks like. The Blink out from AA. He doesn't want anything to do with this. And down goes the Chen. Wicked six pick for the Mirana. Ember Spirit, is there buybacks? Yes, there is. He doesn't want to use it just yet, but he's going to have to use it pretty damn soon. Chatan with the Redemption Sphere. Oh, yeah. There. Please forgive me, fairness. Yeah. Well, in fairness, that chronosphere on cancelling the black hole was was really pretty shoddy, but yeah, he definitely makes up for it there. And I think it did. It was one of those black holes that looked like it wasn't going to catch the Ember Spirit because I actually thought for a second it was only going to catch the Nyx Assassin, not the Ember Spirit. So I, I, I don't fully blame Shatan, but it was it was still a bad bad chronosphere, whichever way you look at it. Yeah, he, he was tricked by the new AoE. Well, maybe we'll that. that. It's like... <laughs> we're, we're making excuses for Alex now. Ember Spirit buys back now. He's picked up a plate mail to go with his item set, so... Vanish. He's not really fully committing to the damage output. Or well, any sort of damage output. This tower, 19 HP, and once it goes down, they can actually go onto the high ground. I don't know if there's, there's sentry wards. Okay, Dazzle picks up two sentries and needs to drop them as soon as possible at this bottom lane. You get the tower tonight. There's your Chronos Fit catches up too. This is going to be the death of the Ember Spirit. Chen with a sendback, but there's no grave. BG got caught in the Chronos as well. They need the grave and the test of faith. That's Ember Spirit on the sidelines. Two minutes as well. Chen goes down to a crit. Nicely played from Muni. They've broken onto the high ground. They brought down three heroes. They're going to make it four in just a second. Nyx gets a Carapace off, but it's too little too late. AA, the last man standing. He's going to orb his way out of there, maybe. Jaunt to the low ground, but Immunity do not care. They're going to focus on the Rax. Jatan say, I'll chase him down. The Malapus is there as well, and GG is called Immunity. Immunity take game Just one of the best of three in the inaugural play and match. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. 70 minutes, Radiant one laner breaks down. GG. Yeah. Uh, All it, it took was, was one big team fight. One big Shatan Spear. That was really nicely played by Immunity. I think it goes to show that they're, all of the players on their team are super experienced as far as playing competitive Dota is concerned, and they are just no strangers to these late game stalemates, uh, situations where one decision, you know, one small mistake can ruin everything. And it, it plays to their strengths, I guess. They looked, you know, reasonably confident and um, interesting draft. They made it work. I mean, we talked about were the history books going to, to favor this offlane faceless void, but I guess that's... At least as far as I know, a 100% win rate so far. It's, it's past the first test. We're going to have to see it a, a bit more before we can fully yeah. fully confirm that it's a legitimate strategy. But for now, it's immunity taking game one. It is a best of three, so we'll see if Execration can bounce back. But, but for now, the Australians off to a fantastic start. It was a bit shaky, but uh, 68 minutes in, they get the job done. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, myself, Gods, as well as my co-caster, Basekip, my fellow Aussie, we're going to see Aussie, if immunity Aussie, can Aussie. close it out 2-0. Or if it's going to go to a game three. Can Execration bounce back? We'll see if the Filipinos have it in them. But for now, guys, stay tuned. More action from the inaugural coming your way. <laughs> 